What is this witchcraft of splitting both ways? Just take my money. Running a big tractor to split wood makes no sense. Nice splitter though. Sure are a lot of whiny tractor owners out there. You should run out to your shop right now and pet your tractor and tell it you will never make it split wood again. Maybe you rub some wax on it. Wear out a four or five hundred dollar motor or a twenty thousand dollar tractor motor. I don't get it. Makes a lot of sense. The tractor already has your power. Why buy, maintain, and care for a redundant power system? Neat item, but I've never been a big fan of the tractor hydraulic splitters. Why put all the hours on a tractor engine when they could be put on a much cheaper, cheaper to run and maintain, easy to replace, small gas engine? I've never owned a tractor. I'm wondering, is it cheaper to run equipment off of a tractor or to buy equipment with their own engines? I've heard that tractor maintenance is so expensive that you want to reduce the hours. However, I can't help but think only performing maintenance on one engine instead of multiple engines would be much cheaper. Has anybody done a study on this? Folks, so a lot of good comments from the last split fire video that we did. It's a hydraulic wood splitter, all right? The tractor operates the hydraulics that feed the splitter and does all the work. And so you're, you're running your tractor while you're doing your work with your tractor the same way that you would run your tractor to mow a field with a brush hog or to pick up things with the loader or to blow snow. You know, you use your tractor to do all these kinds of tasks. It's just one more task you can do with it. And then of course you have the comments like what I was just listing off, which kind of, you know, destroy this whole thing, right? Like why would you put all these hours on your tractor when you can get a standalone engine? And I'm thinking, well, where do you draw that line? Because it's not just a splitter, but you can get a self-powered flail mower, a self-powered brush mower, a self-powered lawn mower, self-powered snow blower, self-powered chipper, I mean, the list just goes on and on. You can get an engine for everything and then you don't even need a tractor, right? And so it's like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm like, how do some folks out there decide what's tractor worthy and what's not tractor worthy? It blows my mind. So, and whatever, that's fine. I mean, you know, there's all these manufacturers out there that are more than happy to sell you something with its own engine on there too. And you're gonna pay a lot more for all those separate setups as well. A lot more engines to maintain, all that kind of thing. But I did a, a survey recently, not too long ago on my YouTube channel. I do a lot of those. So if you are subscribed, you'll be notified of these. They're on the community tab and I'll do polls, just various tractor questions. They're a lot of fun um, to answer and they're a lot of fun to kind of see what the rest of the tractor world is doing too. I did one based on the amount of hours per year that tractor owners put on their machines. Get this, 70% of respondents said they put 100 hours or less a year on their tractor. So let's just say 20 years. That's a max of 2,000 hours in 20 years that you're putting on your tractor based on the current usage. So if you were thinking, huh, maybe I get a log splitter and put, say, 50 more hours a year. Somehow you're, you're increasing it 50% a year with a log splitter. You're going to go up to 3,000 hours in 20 years? Wow, that's incredible, you know? And these tractor engines, these diesel engines, Kubota, Yanmar, Mitsubishi, all of them, they go 5, 10, 15, some go 20,000 hours, okay? And so most folks aren't even gonna ever see the end life of their tractor's engine. And of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's gonna be folks out there that are in a firewood business, right? And you don't wanna pay 40, 50, 60 grand for a tractor. You don't need to, to run a splitter all day long and you wouldn't, but that's not the norm. This is a, a person that has, well, like, like what we have here. We have 40 acres, we got some woods. You know, we have a need, desire for firewood, that kind of thing, and we have the engine, the power source here. So we hook this up just like anything else to do one more task. And so let's go through some considerations, pros and cons, both ways for using a self-powered piece of equipment versus a tractor powered piece of equipment. And you make your own decision. But if there's something I don't mention, then leave a comment down below because a lot of folks watch these videos and maybe you've been grappling with this decision or maybe you've, you've gone through it and already made the decision and you can kind of leave how you went about it and help somebody else out. You know, so I got to thinking about why is it that most folks put 100 hours or less on their tractor every year, which is, if you break it down weekly, that's two hours a week, you know? And, and in the summertime, if you're mowing with it, like a subcompact or a small compact, maybe that's an hour or less a week, I don't know. And then you have an hour of other projects. But I think in reality, the reason is that so many folks are first time tractor owners and you really don't understand how quickly, how efficiently you can get projects done with a tractor compared to doing it by hand with a shovel and a wheelbarrow and manually dragging things around and all that. And it's just incredible how many more projects you get done, but they're all done quickly. And a lot of us want more seat time, you know, and it's just not there all the time. But I really think that that plays a big part of why tractor hours are lower than you would probably expect. Folks, I hope you're enjoying today's video. If you are, 
take just a minute, hit that subscribe button right down below, completely free. And if you're in the market for a tractor attachment, check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. Okay, so a, a few thoughts here then going into that decision, you know, and, and number one is gonna be engine maintenance and repairs, right? And whether it's the tractor or individual engines, you're gonna have repairs and maintenance to do on that. And if you wanna maintain more pieces of equipment, then more power to you. I find myself wanting to, to thin down the equipment that I have. I, I don't have enough time for it. Everything leaks <laughs> or something doesn't work and I just can't maintain it all. You know, I take it into a dealership to have it done and sometimes it comes back and it's still not fixed or it takes weeks and you're without it. And so if you have fewer pieces of equipment to maintain, it doesn't mean nothing's gonna go wrong, but you get to know that engine better. You get to know the ins and outs of it better. It's, it's easier just to maintain one piece of equipment. You can stay on top of it better. I would tend to lean towards using fewer engines versus more engines. You know, uh, gas versus diesel, right? All of our tractors, for the most part, are gonna be diesel engines on there. Um, a lot more torque, a lot more, more power output from that. Um, they don't burn fuel as much typically, at least that's my experience, you know, versus a, a gas powered engine, which just seems to go through fuel really quickly. Um, lifespans in general of a diesel versus a gas engine, you know, you're gonna have a lot more longevity out of a diesel engine versus a gas engine. And that's part of the reason they are cheaper. Even so, I think to burn through either one of these engines, it's just gonna take you so many hours where it's almost a non-factor unless it's basically somebody sitting there all day long, every day using it. Now a benefit to self-powered equipment is a lot of it, especially like on the backside of a machine, is gonna be a towable or like a pull type, you know? So um, if you have, you can see the Ranger in the background there, you have a, a UTV, an ATV, and a tractor, maybe a garden tractor, just multiple pieces of equipment, you can potentially hook up that mower or that chipper. Um, you know, maybe even a snowblower. We have the Rammy snowblowers and the, and the front mount flail mowers and brush hogs. You can mount those on multiple pieces of equipment too. So maybe it's a little bit more versatile that way. Uh, so if one engine or one machine is broken down, you have the possibility to hook it up to something else and still get your projects done. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, we're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. You know now, cost is a big consideration too because if you're buying everything with its own engine on there that is going to cost more for every attachment too and you don't you know we're showing this on a big five series tractor you don't have to get self-powered equipment and go on a big tractor you can get on a little subcompact tractor if you want to but you still have to weigh that cost comparison you know like a let's take a 1025 little subcompact tractor for example you can run a four foot brush hog on there a couple grand maybe 22 2400 bucks something like that if i want to run a a 48 inch brush hog that's self-powered like uh, from Swisher, for example, I feel like those are three, four, five grand, something like that. You can look it up online. They have some options out there too, but that's significantly more money. And maybe in the grand scheme of things, if you only have an ATV or a UTV, that makes sense. Um, but still, that's a big cost difference just for one tool. If you times that by many tools, well, you can see where I'm going with it. That cost gap really shrinks. But again, Splitfire recognizes that decision-making process, and so they offer both, right? They offer a version that hooks up to your hydraulic system on your tractor. They offer a self-powered version too, so you can go either way. Oh, and actually also they offer a PTO add-on kit, so you can, if you don't have the extra hydraulics or maybe not the, the hydraulic flow, you can get a PTO kit and run it off of that too, and just generates through a pump, and then you get your hydraulic flow that way. And in fact, they even have an electric option too, so if you want to get something completely different, completely separate from a tractor, and machine, anything else, you can get the electric version, put that right inside your shop, it's nice and quiet too. And a little fun fact for you, Splitfire actually invented the two-way splitter, all right? So you can split this way, you can come back and split this way too. A pretty sweet setup. I am blessed. I am very fortunate to be able to showcase this piece here and some other uh, pieces of equipment from Splitfire as well. They've sent them over to me to demo to show you guys what they're all about. I don't sell Splitfire equipment. You go right to their website. They are a Canadian company, but they sell to the States. In fact, they, they ship and sell all over the world too. So great folks up there. If you're not sure what the right product is for you, 
they are going to help you out. They're going to ask you what your, your tractor is or, or what your situation is, and they're going to help set you up for success. So hopefully you found this entertaining. If you have some thoughts, some opinions on the subject, then leave a comment down below. If you're looking for a tractor attachment, maybe not a split fire product, but all sorts of other stuff, we're happy to help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. Why don't you take a second, hit that subscribe button right down below and follow along. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.